At the 2021 NBA trade deadline, the Bulls pulled the trigger on one of the more aggressive trade moves the franchise had made in decades when the new front office of Arturis Karnaschovas and Mark Eversley made the surprise move of trading Wendell Carter Jr., a third-year player at that time, and two first-round picks, top four protected, to the Orlando Magic in exchange for all-star big man Nikola Vucevic. Otto Porter and Alfaro Camino were also included in that trade, but they were more in there for salary purposes. And at the time, this was seen as a very directional move for the Bulls that meant they mean business in looking to actually accelerate their timeline and wanting to win now rather than being in a perpetual state of rebuilding. And really the intention was also trying to ensure that they made Zach Levine happy to get him to stay for the long term, which worked. Zach did sign a five-year max contract extension. But despite the Bulls making this aggressive move and trading for an all-star caliber player, because yes, Vucevic was an all-star this season that they traded for him, despite the Bulls making that big splash at the trade deadline, there is now this perception a year and a half later by many fans and the media that the Bulls lost this trade. And more recently, you had ESPN saying that Nikola Vucevic and the trade that the Bulls made for him was an absolute disaster for the Chicago Bulls. Well, in today's video, we're going to be revisiting the trade the Bulls made for Vucevic, the positives and the negatives, and why the fans and the media are overblowing this trade and labeling it a disaster and not looking at the big picture on why this move made sense for the Bulls. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, I think most Bulls fans, not all I know, but most, even if they don't want to admit it now after the fact, they were ecstatic when the Bulls traded for Nikola Vucevic when it happened because it was the first first time we had finally seen the Bulls make an aggressive move since triggering the rebuild. The first time the Bulls had traded for an actual all-star, and it was the first time in a long time where the Bulls finally acted like a big market franchise. For years, the Bulls and the way that they handled the organization, you would think it was a small market team. And it also addressed a need on the roster. Some people might forget about this, but leading up to the trade deadline, the two things talked about most that the Bulls needed to address was their center spot, a true center, because a lot of people didn't feel that Wendell Carter Jr. was an actual five. And the other was the point guard position, as it became more and more clear that Kobe White probably wasn't going to be what the Bulls needed as their starting point guard. In fact, he even got benched leading up to the deadline in favor of Tomas Sadoransky. And what's funny is that when we were talking about potential options the Bulls should be looking at for a good center option leading up to the trade deadline, players that could rebound the ball and hold their own in the paint, we were talking about guys like Andre Drummond, Rashawn Holmes, like we were conditioned to have such little expectations of the Bulls front office. Then we saw the Woj bomb that the Bulls had traded for Nikola Vucevic, a guy who we knew was likely on the trading block because of the direction the Magic were taking. Vuce was considered to be this outside chance guy that the Bulls could potentially get. So for me personally, when I learned that the the Bulls traded for Vucevic, I was ecstatic. I was a little taken aback by the fact that they traded two first round picks to get him, but I was okay with it because that's the price you pay for an all-star. Although now it's more like three, four, or five first round picks unprotected to get an all-star. But trading Wendell Carter Jr., I didn't want to move Wendell. Although at the time Wendell was really struggling in his role on the Bulls, I shouldn't really say struggling, but the Bulls were constantly getting beaten up in the paint every night and were one of the worst rebounding teams in the league. And if you remember, when Kobe White got demoted to the bench in favor of Tomas Sadoransky, Billy Donovan also decided decided to bench Wendell Carter Jr. when both players had a stretch of bad games. So it was safe to say that my trust in Wendell to develop into this amazing star player was shot. So to get an already established all-star in Vucevic for two picks, which you guys know how I feel about draft picks, the NBA draft is a crapshoot, and Wendell Carter Jr., who yes, was young, still had some upside, but was struggling to find his stride and was also fairly injury prone at the time when he was playing for the Bulls. That's the other thing people forget that Wendell was in and out of the lineup quite a bit in his short NBA career. So I was all for this trade and I thought it signaled to the rest of the league and the fans that, hey, the Bulls are not gonna mess around anymore and just try and build through the draft as they had done for years. Now, fast forward to where we are today. We've got a full season and a half of Vucevic as a Chicago Bull, and so far the initial returns aren't very good. I do think Vuce gets more criticism than he probably deserves from Bulls fans, but even unfair criticism aside, Vucevic has not played like the all-star level player that we traded for. Vuce was averaging damn near 25 and 12, shooting 40% from three in that last season in Orlando. Granted, it was unreasonable to expect him to be putting up those kind of numbers after getting traded to the Bulls when they had Zach Levine. Vuce was the number one option in Orlando and was going to be a number two option after getting traded to Chicago, and then actually moved to a number three option after the Bulls acquired DeMar DeRozan. So you can't expect Vucevic to be scoring 25 points per game when you have guys like Zach and DeMar on your team. He's not going to be getting as many shot attempts as he did in Orlando. But Vucevic, so far, 
In his 99 games that he's played with the Bulls, is averaging 18.7 points per game, 11.2 rebounds on 47% shooting, and 33% from three. That is quite a drop off, even despite him going from being a number one option to a number three option. A quite a drop off based on what we saw him being able to do in Orlando. Last season, Vooch posted lower numbers in virtually all statistical categories with the exception of blocks. He averaged one block per game last season while averaging 0.7 blocks the season prior. And for me, the most disappointing thing about Vooch was his lack of aggression and confidence throughout most of the season. Some of it is on coaching, which I'll talk about because I do think that Vooch was utilized or not utilized enough and utilized ineffectively. Too much emphasis was being placed on him shooting from outside and spacing the floor and not feeding him in the paint, which he does best at. But regardless, Vooch was not aggressive enough. He seemed timid at times and passed up on shots. And overall, he's underperformed since being on the Bulls. Now, because of all of this, it is now widely believed that the Bulls lost this trade in getting Vooch. And I think this sentiment is unfounded. First of all, I always think it's too early to determine who won or lost a trade when it's not even two years after said trade. And trades can also appear to be as if a given team quote unquote won the trade initially and then years later we see that it actually worked out for both teams. But even with all of that, calling the Vooch trade a disaster for the Chicago Bulls is just absurd in my view. Because again, I've seen a lot of Bulls fans and non-Bulls fans say that, well, Wendell Carter Jr. is already better than Vooch. So right there, that's an L. And to that I reply, how is it that Wendell is better than Vucevic? What puts him ahead of Vucevic and sets him apart to qualify him that he's a better player? Wendell had a great season this past year. Don't get me wrong, his best season yet. But even with his best season, he still missed 20 games, more than Vucevic did. He averaged less points, rebounds, assists, steals, and blocks than Vucevic did. Wendell still struggles with his outside shot, although he has been getting better shooting from three. And yes, I'm aware Vucevic shot 31% from three while Wendell shot 32, but Wendell also shot that rate on less volume. And we're talking about a bad shooting season for Vucevic, like one of his worst, and he's still just one percentage point below Wendell from three. And even by the advanced metrics, you look at box plus minus, value over replacement player, player efficiency rating, both players are pretty comparable, except Wendell is putting up these numbers on a bad team, one of the worst teams in the league. And I know this sounds like I'm just throwing shade at Wendell and that I want him to fail or something. No, I actually like Wendell and hope he does well in Orlando because you know, I think we wrote him off a little too soon, but I'm more just pointing out the ridiculous narrative that Wendell is somehow better than Vucevic because Wendell had one of his best seasons on a very bad team. People always talk about Wendell being a better two-way player than Vucevic because he's a good rim protector. Is he though? Wendell in his rookie season looked like he was going to be a dominant shot blocker and rebounder in the future, but he has since kind of dropped off in terms of his overall defensive efficiency while he adapts to spreading the floor more. And again, Vucevic averaged more blocks and steals than Wendell Carter Jr. did. Yes, Wendell is younger. Obviously, that's an advantage over Vucevic. He has more upside because of his age, so I get that. It's a piece you could have worked with for the long haul, but developing and working on project players likely doesn't enable you to keep Zach Levine if you're still a rebuilding team and in the lottery by the time he becomes a free agent. Then, of course, the other piece the Bulls trading the two first-round picks, one of which has conveyed already and the other set to convey next season. The first pick that they sent to Orlando, which ended up being that number eight pick that Magic used to draft Franz Wagner, who looked incredible in his rookie season and looks like a true stud in the making that is going to have a long, prosperous career in the NBA. Like, the Magic fared better with the Bulls lottery pick than their own at number five when they drafted Jalen Suggs. But here's the thing. First of all, when the Bulls traded Vucevic, the thought was that this would make them good enough to make the playoffs, and therefore that pick was going to be less valuable because it wouldn't be a lottery pick. And if you're trading two non-lottery picks for Vucevic, that's not so bad. But unfortunately, the Bulls, after making the trade, didn't really have enough time to build any sort of chemistry with the new acquisitions, and Zach got COVID towards the end of the season, which completely derailed any chance of making the playoffs. And then the other reason I don't like the argument of, well, the Bulls could have had Wagner and Wendell instead of Vucevic, we don't know that the Bulls would have taken Wagner at number eight. And second, as great as Wagner has looked thus far after just his rookie season, we should be reminded to not get too carried away with how a player performs in their rookie year. Need I remind everyone, a guy like Lowry Markinen looked like a great rookie, and also playing on a very bad team, mind you, looked like a future star in the making. And then he kind of tapered off as he didn't really develop and improved on some of his weaknesses, didn't really improve his footwork in the paint, and started becoming relegated to more of a catch and shoot shooter. Not saying that that's what's going to happen with Franz Wagner, but just something to remember when we hype players after having a good rookie season and we immediately think, oh, they're the future. Tell that also to guys like Tyreek Evans and Michael Carter Williams. So there's that. And for the second pick that they traded, which is the Bulls' 2023 first round pick, I mean, 
The hope is the Bulls, given the additional talent that they've added since making the Vucevic trade, the fact that they made the playoffs last season, you would think this is going to be a mid to late first round pick. This is not going to be a top 10 pick that the Bulls are handing to the Magic. And yes, you can always hit on a late first round pick and pick up a solid player, but those are so few and far between. So I'm not concerned about that pick getting shipped to the Magic. And honestly, with the way teams are handing out first round picks for star players these days, that isn't that much of an overpay as some would like to say that it is. And then finally, and I kind of alluded to this earlier, with the way the Bulls were heading before making the trade for Vucevic, the team still had a ways to go before they could truly compete. I'm talking before they could even make the playoffs. Some good young talent, some good pieces to work with, but not a team that was going to be making any noise anytime soon. And for the new front office, knowing that Zach Levine was going to be an unrestricted free agent in 2022, knowing that if you don't make moves now to show that you mean business in building a winning team, you likely could lose Zach for nothing. You're a star player. And that sets the rebuild back even further. So to me, that's the most important factor on why this trade made sense for the Bulls and still makes sense today because it was the first domino that triggered further transactions in the Bulls landing Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, Alex Caruso that put you in a position to actually be a winning team and in a position to retain Zach Levine and keep building for the future. I know a lot of people will say, well, if you don't make the trade for Vucevic, you likely don't get DeMar DeRozan, which I think, sure, there is some truth to that. But at the same time, I think DeMar likely would have come to the Bulls with the amount of money they offered him, whether Vuce was there or not. But to me, my argument is if you don't make the trade for Vucevic, you likely lose Zach Levine in free agency, especially if it means the Bulls aren't good enough to be an attractive free agency spot that would entice Lonzo Ball, DeMar DeRozan, and Alex Caruso. And without those guys, and without Zach, if he walks in free agency, a team of Wendell Carter Jr., Lowry Markin, and Kobe White, Patrick Williams, Franz Wagner, if that's who they ended up picking, that is not a team that is going to be winning very many games. And I don't even think we could say it's a team that has a super bright future. Sure, maybe it has a bright future. They can, you know, get some first round playoff exits in them, but that's about it. So to all those saying this was a disaster of a trade made by the Bulls, as much as Vooch hasn't panned out all that well thus far, as much as Wendell and Franz Wagner have looked nice, and yes, as much as the Bulls may not even extend Vooch beyond this season, and now you lost that haul for two and a half seasons of Vucevic, as much as that may sound like a disaster to some, a disaster would have been had the Bulls not made that trade, which could have led to subsequent offseason moves that we saw. They would have lost Zach Levine for nothing in free agency, and the Bulls being stuck with all of their project players remaining at the bottom of the NBA standings. That would have been a disaster. Sitting idle and not doing anything when the Bulls clearly needed to make adjustments to the roster and setting themselves back even further when Zach walks. So I think it's unfair and inaccurate to say that this was a botched trade or the Bulls lost this trade because of how Vucevic has shown up. No, the Vuce trade was the catalyst that enabled the Bulls to finally move out of perpetual rebuild and being the laughing stock of the NBA. But hey, that's just my take on the matter. I would love to hear what you guys think of the Vucevic trade now one year later, one and a half years later, I should say. Let me know in the comments and as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in guys and I'll catch you in the next one.